trailer as much as you do but if a developer is asking for more time i have to give it to them remember this is an indie game developer this is an ea or activision where they can just poop out a game every year and people will just blindly buy it like there's no tomorrow this is their one and only shot to make a game that either breaks them or makes them and i'm sure the pressure is on because void interactive has a lot of hype behind their first major upcoming game. The last thing that they would want to do is fumble the ball. Now that I've said my piece, let's move on to uh, the rest of the video. So on their Instagram, they uploaded a new picture and it's called Alabama. And it shows a picture of an African-American wearing an ops core helmet. I believe that's what that's called. The picture itself is pretty self-explanatory, but uh, yeah. what? Is that my Discord? Well, it's from the Ready or Not Discord. Interesting. Didn't notice that comment, wonder if Durag will? What the hell are you talking about? Is he talking about the comments that are on the Instagram page? Let's scroll down here. Where'd that judge? Where'd that judge at, boy? Where'd that judge at, boy? At Barricade. Gonna have to wait for the trailer. Wait. Does this guy know something I don't? Who is this guy? Barricade? Huh. There's a lot of uh, ready or not stuff. Wait a second, this guy looks familiar. Where have I seen this guy's face before? Oh, I remember. Dan Liston's page, that one guy. Barricade. Oh. Is this guy connected to this somehow? Remember in a previous video when I said that this guy would sound really good as a ready or not voice actor? Well, maybe that's what he is. Because he talked about something that's going to be in the trailer, so obviously he knows what's going on. That or maybe he's just a friend of Dan Liston. But either way, it's interesting nonetheless. Let's get back to the Instagram post. So he says, where is the judge? Are these code names? Is Alabama and Judge code names? And if they are, what are they code names for? Are they for that specific voice actor? Kind of like how they had it in Swap 4 with all those other guys, I can't remember. Or maybe it's like a customization sort of deal where you can make a code name for yourself. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Oh, well. Hmm. I guess the next thing that we're gonna push over to is reddit. I haven't gone over to this website in a while So there should be a bunch of information that I could toss up here. So get ready cuz here it comes Gamescom will you participate at Gamescom? Yes, I'm just curious and the developer replies with only if you can enter the dev press area So were they at Gamescom? Does does anybody know? Uh, I know two people that actually went but I don't think that they actually got anything or, or even found them So anyways moving on up next we have gas masks since there will be gas masks We will be able to change filters like in other games for example, Metro 2033. And if you don't have a filter, it shouldn't affect you unless you go into some gas. I was just wondering if this mechanic will apply in this game too. And the developer replies with, You won't be able to change filters, but we are experimenting with the ability to remove a gas during gameplay if you don't require it, just so you can see a little more. Later on in the comments, somebody says, Make sure it is realistic and the operator goes through the process and steps of making sure the mask is secure. And the developer replies with, Wouldn't ever be like BF1's glue on mask huh moving on we have any other ways to unlock doors is there any way we'll get a pick lock mechanic so we're not always forced to use the ram or blow up the doors and if we do have will it be something similar to swap 4 where you are just waiting to pick the lock or will it be a more interactive one and the developer replies with lock picking is in other ways does a bear cat count wait are you saying i could ram through the goddamn door with the freaking vehicle that sounds fucking awesome all right moving on 
Commentary gameplay footage with a real SWAT officer would be cool. You know, kind of like this video, but it's a private investigator playing L.A. Noir. I wish for a similar style video, but with wrong gameplay with a SWAT officer. That's an interesting video. It's, a, it's investigators playing L.A. Noir, which what you do in there is basically you investigate what's really happening with every crime scene, which, you know, I mean, a lot of people know by this point, but, you know, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Continuing on, having a person with real experience commentate how the real situation compares to video games and all that would be cool and educational at the same time and the developer replies with that's a nice idea will we see it i don't know your good your guess is as good as mine moving on a lot of the promo art is in stylized black and white it'd be fascinating to try to play the whole game like this almost like a nor film it shows off two pictures that we've already seen before sort of like the 2007 movie the mist was meant to be watched in black and white even though the official release was in color so they made a special version with both and maybe a second filter with the above but also red being the only visible color like in the promo pics in schindler's list lol older games usually had the option to modify the colors with filters it'd be kind of neat if ron had the same and the developer applies with agreed so are we going to be able to play this game in black and white that'd be kind of cool all right let's move on to the next one we've got i'm gonna go ahead and assume the swat officers are all vampires Fair enough. Considering the fact that 90% of screenshots released are in the dark and rain, I severely hope this doesn't mean the majority of the missions will take place at night and in the rain. It looks neat, I get it, but fuck that. But, uh, but I mean, I actually like that more than anything. And the developer replies with, most missions are during the day. Hmm. If they're showing off like one specific area that's in the dark, is this like the last level of the game? or or one of the toughest levels because if if most levels are during the game or during the day i don't know i'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head uh right, let's move let's move on let's move on up next we have unauthorized deadly force penalty for firing on subject drawing weapon how does everyone feel about being penalized for this i've been replaying swat 4 sef with the lethal loadout i'm getting docked a lot of points on some maps for shooting what are in my mind obviously valid handgun drawing targets and the developer applies with no if they have intent to kill you you won't be penalized that is if they pointed their firearm at you somebody replies to that saying cop here they don't have to point the gun at you to present a grievous bodily harm situation where you would shoot someone and the developer replies with had a few responses to this we'll review i mean i kind of hope they don't change the system because you know i actually Heard that later on what if they had intent to kill but haven't pointed at me yet and i kept them mid draw do i still get penalized and the developer replies with perhaps his draw was to put the gun on the ground you're quite an overzealous officer minus points for you later on in the comments somebody says leave it like this they need to point at you before you can shoot them we have waited a long long time for a swap for successor don't water it down and the developer replies with, where did I say we were going to change it from that? Oh, yeah, I like the original system. I don't like this, um, you know, you're going to have to guess before you actually shoot him. You, you have to, like, you know, follow rules, you know? And maybe you have a different opinion than I do, but... Up next, we have my concerns and questions to the dev team. Holy shit, this is long. Hello, the developer team. I have a few questions regarding Ready or Not. One is personal. Others relate to the gameplay. The personal issue is that I lost my GTX 680. I need to replace it. I decided to go with the GTX 1060 because it gives the best performance for my money. However, I don't know which version I should pick. 3 gigs or 6 gigs VRAM? I would pick 3 gigs because my PC is 5 years old and I'm going to replace it within 2-3 to three years. So there is no need to buy the strongest GPU. However, the rest of the components are working very well despite the age i know that the newer games sometimes tend to use more than three gigabytes of vram so my question is a is that the case with ready or not as well should i pick three gigs version or six gig version how much does ron use on medium high settings at 1920 by 1080 i'd like to add that i'm aiming to at least 120 fps including drops on low to medium settings what version would you advise me other two questions relate to the gameplay mechanics sniping and scope uses to be precise i observed a ridiculous trend in 
many FPS games, including Rainbow Six Siege and CSGO, CQB sniping. In CSGO, the AWP is the favorite CQB weapon. Not the shotguns, not the SMGs, just the AWP. Most kills using AWP take place within 15 meters range. That's because of lack of an anti-quickscope and zoom sway mechanisms. On the other hand, in RS6, there is an ACOG zoomed side overuse in CQB ranges. Why the hell did they add an ACOG to a CQB oriented game? Players can choose laser, red dot, holographic sights, all times one magnified. It results that the core gameplay looks like, forgive me, f***ing through a keyhole. As everyone search enemies little pixels through very tiny spacings. It's obviously nearly impossible to achieve traditional non-zoom CQB sights mentioned above. I understand that proper tactics require not exposing too much potential enemy fire, but something like this is deeply unrealistic and ridiculously stupid. My question is B. Will we meet ACOGging and RON within CQB ranges or sniper rifles available for entry team so that CQB sniping is possible? Like in the CQB sniping global offense? The last question is, will you add laser sights? It's used by CT teams around the world. I asked because I just saw pics of red dots and hollow sights, but not laser sights. Thanks in advance and good luck. And the developer replies with, can answer A right now, but usually bigger is better. I'm not entirely sure why you're comparing Ready or Not to CSGO, or even Siege for that matter. While both games are great, they place a big emphasis on fast rounds and twitch shooting competitive environment. B, we have an ACOG on an M16A3 and an M24, but both are used for marksmen and snipers respectively. Are those two new weapons that we haven't heard of before? M16A3 and M24? I don't remember. C, ready or not as laser sights. I'll go one further for you and add D. We don't have any issue with pixel peeking because the player's perspective isn't placed in the chest. The camera is located in the head and the weapon and a good portion of the player will obviously have to be exposed in order to get any shots on target. And somebody replies to that saying, is the ACOG going to be locked to the weapon or is there any option for us to maybe select it as an option going forward whenever the game comes out? There may be some custom maps it could be useful on and it'd be nice not to have to mod the game to access it and the developer replies with yeah we're looking at allowing it as an option there will be very little use for it in a cqb environment but it may still have its place later on in the comments somebody says i like the setup and escape from tarkov and ground branch it felt nice and the developer replies with, We currently support a fair bit, but you need to be mindful of the weapon's weight. It'll factor in somewhat. Up next we have Russian Theater Hostage Situation. Is there a chance that we will get to play the Russian Theater Hostage Situation in Ron? Maybe not the same size, but scaled down because it would be interesting to see how people would solve it. Because I see a lot of people giving the Russians a lot of shit for the 130 dead hostages when there was no other way really to solve the situation. Somebody in the comments says real life events will not be recreated for the sake of respect to the families and to cut back on backlash and the developer replies with we won't recreate the events or characters verbatim but almost all of the levels are inspired directly by actual occurrences yeah this is actually the first i've heard about the russian theater hostages thing i don't know if that's like something that happened recently or i don't know that's just interesting topic okay let's move on to the next one up next we have, what do you think about the trailer being constantly delayed? I was talking with a friend about that. I'm clearly with the devs. It's better to delay it than release a bad trailer and rework bad aspects of the game to make the game even better. But he says that it's showing the weaknesses of the Void team. There is little chance for the release in November and if they continue delaying the trailer, it will create high decrease. They can also lose potential investors with that. What do you guys think of that? And the developer replies with, unfortunately these things take a lot of time, especially when you're developing a game and not just creating stuff for people to look at did we release the first trailer early absolutely not it gave us the traction and certainly what we needed to make deals and decisions that have brought us to where we are today it's very easy to look from an outsider's perspective without seeing all of the internals but void is not that kind of company that posts work in progress content just to keep the masses sedated instead we'd rather show quality when we think it meets our own standards and then relay that to you guys i'd be kicking myself if we miss showing some content just because you rush to get something out the door to show everyone naturally we're going to take the time required to make this game exactly how we want it to be that being said there are internal deadlines that we strive to meet so this doesn't take years to come out we want you all playing this as much as we want to complete it giving exact dates was a mistake however people got their hopes up and that was on us but believe me we're trying yeah yeah like i said in the beginning of the video this is an indie game developer you know 
Um, they don't exactly have, you know, the best assets, I want to say, to, like, complete this thing as fast as we would like it. So it's going to take time, and I've kind of expected this. Like, I remember when I said that um, I was expecting this game to come out in, like, early 2019, and I was kind of surprised that, you know, they announced for November. I was just like, oh, it seems kind of early to me, but maybe... Maybe, you know, maybe they got it a lot faster than I thought they did. But yeah, Void, take all the time that you need, man. Take all the time that you need, because I want this game to be perfect. Mwah! Question on leader roles? I just have a question about roles in Ron. For example, in the Milsim squad, they have different types of roles in squad like squad leader. Will there be a similar mechanic in Ron in multiplayer, where one player is given or chooses the leader role and tells the rest of the people in his squad what to do. I feel like if one person doesn't have a leader role and no one gives orders, everyone will just run around and not communicate, similar to Siege. And the developer replies with, there is one leader for the whole team in multiplayer. The leader has the ability to command both red team and blue team or element. So the last thing that I'm going to leave you with is a bit of a bombshell. So when Easy Street posted an announcement on their Discord about the trailer coming out in August, it turns out to be false. I'm not going to knock Easy Street for this because he's relatively new to the project process and the original Void team never truly gave a specific date that they were pushing it back to. Easy Street later apologized and removed the post. So the bombshell comes in from Reddit because according to a post that was recently found on their Reddit that's quoted as saying, Here's a letter that Void Interactive sent me as an answer to my question about crowdfunding support. Hi, person. Thanks for your email and continued support for Ready or Not. Game development is moving along nicely, and our recently expanded team is certainly helping accelerate things. But boy, making a AAA game is huge. So contrary to what I said in the beginning of the video, apparently Ready or Not is a AAA game. Holy shit, my speculation was actually correct. <sighs> Continuing on. We are expecting to release an 8 minute plus trailer with lots of gameplay in late September, which we already knew about the 8 minute trailer if you watched one of my previous videos, but it's it's the most surprising part is September here. He continues with saying, We are not a Kickstarter or anything like that. We may offer a game as a pre-order item in late September or October this year. That includes some beta access. Cheers, the Void Team. I'm not responsible for the validity of information developers provided me with, and I hope they don't mind me sharing this information with other fans. So later on, this Reddit user actually released a picture of the email, and it's actually... It looks legitimate, uh, aside from the Russian markings that are here. It looks legitimate, but one thing I have to question is the Void Interactive team. Because usually when I get an email like this, it's it's from JR. So I'm I'm really questioning the, you know, the realness of this. The devs haven't seemed to come out and really address this just yet, so we'll have to wait and see about that. So be sure to take this as a grain of salt, because for all I know, this could be an elaborate troll. But I thought that this would be interesting to share nonetheless. So good thing I waited to release this video because the dev actually responded to a comment that was in the comment section for this post. So let me read what the comment actually said first. Requesting you Gunter, this seems very weird. There's no reason why they would give you this kind of information without informing the rest of the community. I have my doubts and looking at the other comments, they seem reasonable. And the developer replies with, Our investor replies to every single email. And as far as the rest of the development team is concerned, this information was soft, internal, and still amidst discussion. When we have an official detail about our title, it'll be through a proper announcement. Very interesting. So that is the end of that bombshell that kind of got dropped on all of us. So the last thing that I want to say is that Easy Street was quoted as saying, There will be something small soon and by soon i mean very soon we will still do the gameplay trailer of course but there will be some news soon just keep an eye on things he also later stated that it was substantial so I, i'm trying to think of something that's small but very substantial and i'm just thinking the release date maybe i don't know so before i end the video i need to let everybody know that the person that's actually taking the emails from the website is actually the investor for ready or not jr is that investor so he's kind of a loose cannon so if you've ever wondered why we're getting a lot of stuff from the emails it's because he's somewhat separate from the guys that we're all talking to so the guys that we're talking to don't want us to know what's going on but the investor is just letting things go left and right i just found that out just a few seconds ago so it all makes sense why he would release information that would otherwise be sensitive that marks the end of our video ladies and gentlemen i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i will catch you 
in the next one. Bye bye. Hey, is that about ready? These things, they take time.